season. Looking like it's going to be every single beer as good as the last. And they're under white. Well, Yolanda Neff looks to be leading there in the white. Yolanda Neff crosses the line to take her 10th career World Cup win. Pace is incredibly high. Langbach takes her second World Cup of the year. The racing will be as fast and furious as it's ever been. The race to the site to the title is very much on. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Montsantan in Canada. It's the day the cross country riders get to go between the tapes here in the most historical of all the World Cup venues. Joining me is Olympic champion Bart Brenchens. But we've both raced here in the past. I mean, it's one that I always have very, very fond memories of. Yeah, Montsantan has a long history, and if you see the list of riders who have won here in the past. All the new riders from the, from the new generation likes to be added to that list too, so they will fight really hard for that uh, race uh, today. This, this is Mountain Bike, it's classic. It's like a who's who of mountain biking who's won here. Did you ever win here? Second place is my best result. <laughs> Shouldn't have brought that up. <laughs> OK, the last three weeks, what have you been up to, Bart, since the last World Cup? Don't tell me you've been putting your feet up. Actually, I did. No, I had what? a bit of time for that. So uh, I went on holiday for, with my uh, wife and kids. Uh, we took our dog with us as well. We went to Croatia, which was uh, really nice. Uh, sun, sea, beach, uh, call it more like that. And uh, we had a bit of relaxed time, but it was uh, very nice to do. I think the dog's having an incredible time. Look at it, boat trips, mountaineering, brilliant. <laughs> it's like a small child. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're working with one today. So it's been a really busy week for Yolanda Neff this week. She was European champion on Tuesday. Now she's here. How's she dealing with that? Yeah, in six days' time, uh, these uh, European riders uh, did uh, have to do three races. Yeah, not uh, just Yolanda. No, no, it's not only her, more, more of them. But not, uh, not everybody. Uh, some of them skip uh, Europeans and uh, save some energy for uh, this weekend. But Yolanda did. She became a European champion. And uh, she will fight hard today, too. I mean, we're right at the sharp end now of the championship. Just two rounds to go, including this one. Am I right in thinking there's literally just two riders in that fight? Yeah, it is. Uh, Annika Langfart, uh, who is second in the overall, uh, she gained back 25 points with that win from last Friday in short track. But Yolanda, she's still leading um, and uh, she's uh, able to win that title. But it's going to be a, a hard fight between these two. I think it is. You know, and while the world champion enjoys incredible consistency this year, her biggest rival has had a very up and down season so far. Annika Langwart started the season just as she did the last three years in a row, with a win. And it turned out that the newly added discipline of short track suits her as well. I had no idea what to expect uh, of a World Cup short track. Um, so I went into the whole thing with a very open mind. Um, coming out victorious in the short track uh, as well was a big surprise to me. She won the first ever short track World Cup in Alpstadt, Germany and backed it up with another win in Novemesto, where she also did well in the main race against Yolanda Neff. It came down to a sprint finish and I knew based on, on the short track um, that I have a pretty good sprint once I commit to it and, and I used it once again. I had to, to play things into my favour and I just gave it everything I had. At the next race in Italy she made it three short track wins in a row, but the XCO race didn't go to plan. The cross country race in Val d'Isola was really, really not good for me. Oh, and a massive crash there, that's Langvan! Two girls got the handlebars like tangled together just in front of me. And I mean, when you're right behind something like that, there's no, you have no chance because I couldn't go to any of the sides and I just went down like really hard. She injured her hand and couldn't continue the race. From there, got to the hospital and, and got some x-rays, but luckily it wasn't broken, it was just a massive bruise. Annika was able to start in Andorra and secured a second in short track and an eighth place in the cross-country race. I had a, some really good time to, to train and, and prepare for these races and I'm feeling good. For sure, I'm, I'm really gonna give it a good go. With two races left now, she is still in good contention for her very first overall title win. Well, definitely some uh, bad luck there for Annika Langvad back in, in, in Val Sole. She has, though, been dominating the short track races. When it comes down to today's XEO, the longer race, who's got the edge? 
on a course like this here in Monsen, then I think she will struggle with the descents, the technical descents, what we have over here. And that suits Yolanda Neff really well. And who else should we look for today, Bart? Of course, the North American riders who hasn't done the, the European Championships last Tuesday. They saved a lot of energy for this weekend. Emily Betty, she uh, yeah, got the podium already this year for three times, so she might be in for her first win. Well, that's right. And it, uh, Emily Batty is still searching for that first World Cup win. Could she take it here today? Why not? She's absolutely in the form of her life. Emily Betty, the Canadian national champion, is ready to race on home turf with her husband and coach right beside her. I came up through a sport family where that's what we did, you know, all summer long. It was a family thing. And then when I met my husband um, at the time, I was 16. And, and so, and Adam was a professional racer as well. So the two of us really made this, you know, team, this small village right from day one. No doubt a great team. But for some reason, the season kicked off not quite so well this year. I did a lot more flyaway training camps with the Canadian national team program. And I learned in March that it was just too much travel for me. And, and I was already um, I was feeling that effect before the season even began in, in March. And um, yeah, so it was a really disappointing uh, start to the year. With only a 14th place in Stellenbosch and a 13th place in Abstadt, the winning team from Ontario had to rethink their strategy and race tactics. So when we went back to the drawing board, we're like thinking, okay, the numbers are good, but why isn't it coming out on race day? We put a lot more focus in being, into being more economical efficient, and, and I think that's played a big role, and just getting my weight down and my power is now staying the same, um, so I'm able to you know, attack from the bottom of the climb with the same amount of watts, but using less energy efficiently. With this transformation, she paved the way back to the top and was well and truly back in the game for Val di Sole. I was just really motivated and I found myself in a position where I was not only, um, you know, racing for medals, I was racing for the win. The Canadian Emily Batty second again, still searching for that first World Cup win. It is her strongest ride though for quite some time. I think it came down to about four seconds in the end. Um, so, I mean, it, it brought so much confidence, but it also was kind of a bittersweet. Emily Batty takes third. Well, it's her third World Cup podium of the year. The second lap, I was up at, at the front again, and I dropped my chain in, in, a, in a corner going at the base of a climb. And so from then on, it was just, you know, chasing forward. Um, so, yeah, I came up with third, but again, it brought more confidence, and now we're in Mount St. Anne, and I'm, I'm hoping to use that, uh, that energy into this weekend. Well, within four seconds of winning a World Cup, wouldn't it be nice to see her take that maiden win here in Canada today? We know that she's on form. She didn't go badly at all in Friday night's short track race. This is what happened. Short track racing was dominated by Annika Langbad this season, and the fifth edition presented a great opportunity to close the gap to the overall leader, Yolanda Neff. The Danish rider even skipped the European Championship early in the week to fully focus on the World Cup. In my opinion, there was a lot of races in one week, um, and I decided to focus more on the World Cups, but definitely like trying to keep things a little bit more easy. Jolanda Neff, who had won the European Championship, had the confidence on her side. Neff's teammate Maja Vlozowska led the race at the beginning, but both overall contenders were in the leading group as well. After two years away from the sport, the Czech Republic's Katarina Nash made a comeback in World Cup racing. Yeah, I have a um, great experience with short track racing them in the US my entire mountain bike career, you know, and uh, I, I really like this one because it was uh, definitely one of the more fair ones. She had to start in the last row, but in short track racing, a lot is possible. On the final lap, Annika Langwart attacked and managed to pull away to secure her fourth short track World Cup win of the season. I knew I was pretty strong. I mean, I had a few really tough weeks in Valdisol and Andorra, obviously, with the crash 
Uh, so I went back and had some time, took a little bit of time off, went back into training and just felt better and better and went into this race with uh, more confidence and I'm feeling much better now. Overall leader Neff finished the race in second, still collecting valuable points for the standings. Uh, to come back here now and finish on second place after already quite some traveling to get here, um, I, I couldn't be happier with that and uh, I, yeah, I, I take a very good feeling with me for Sunday. In her first elite season, Kate Courtney had another great race and rounded out the top three. With the fourth place, Katarina Nash rode from the last short track row into Sunday's first row. Oh, I couldn't help but notice Katarina Nash. How long has she been away from the sport? More than a year, actually. Been, uh, without any UCI points, she uh, got that first start row today. So <laughs> that's, that's uh, incredible what she did. Do you think she, I mean, been away a little while? Can she perform over this longer distance today? She Do we said, need to keep an eye on her? I don't think so. She said really, she's really good in short track, but uh, cross country is a bit different. This is going to be a tough one. Well, there's some points on offer for short track, and we've added them to the overall standings. This is what they look like now coming into today's main event. Yolanda Neff still leading with uh, 92 points, uh, Annika Langfahrt behind her. Uh, with, to know, 625 points are still to win. Um, everything is still possible. Everything still to fight for. And today, it's on the World Cup's oldest track. The cross-country track in Mont saint -Anne got a facelift with a newly added loop. It now measures 4.1 kilometers in length and has a vertical climb of 187 meters. A new start-finish area at the former feed zone location is followed by the new section with Mercedes-Benz La Perdrie. A steep and natural downhill leading into a switchback climb on an extremely loose surface. After riders pass the newly assembled feed zone, the old and famous part of the course starts with L'Enfer de Saint-Anne. A 113 meter long uphill that literally puts the riders, as the name suggests, through hell. With the heart rate up to the maximum, the most technical and infamous downhill in cross country awaits. Shimano La Beatrice. Getting through this rocky desert unscathed gets you serious bragging rights in the pits. It's time for the last and longest climb. Mercedes-Benz Zigzag de la Marmotte. Attacks could be launched right before the start of this rocky and technical uphill. For the last technical downhill, riders need to decide which line to take. GoPro Germain's left has more flow with two berms, whereas the right line is steeper, rockier and shorter, but features a straighter and faster exit. Well, that track's been here a long time, but you know it makes your legs hurt just looking at it. And so many rocks. It's such a technical track. What do you make of it? I mean, there's some changes this year as well. Yeah, they took out uh, one of the main climbs, but they add a nice part of it uh, to this track. Uh, it's more flowy, more technical as well. And I think most of the riders they love this uh, how it is right now. And we have the national, we have the world championships next year. So I think with that new part, it's uh, definitely something better. It's definitely a very, very worthy track. That's for sure. Who's going to win today then, Bart? That's always so difficult in the women's category. Yeah, but um, That's why we ask you. You're the expert, <laughs> man. Come on. With that win from last Tuesday and fighting for the title, Yolanda Neff. OK. She told me she was a little bit tired last night when I saw her, but I didn't tell you that before your prediction. Stay with us to find out if he's right. It is the penultimate stop of this year's Mercedes-Benz UCI Cross Country World Cup. The commentary will be available in English with us and also in German and Portuguese. We'll be right back after this. The Crankworks World Tour is back to its birthplace, Whistler, Canada, for the 15th annual Crankworks competition, featuring Nikolai Rogatkin, aiming to be the first athlete ever to win the Triple Crown of Slopestyle. The final stop of the Crankworks Slopestyle World Championship, Red Bull Joyride 2018, 
from Whistler, Canada, live, August 18th, 11.30 p.m. on Red Bull TV. Half an hour drive from Quebec's capital, Quebec City, along the St. Lawrence River, you get to the ski and mountain bike resort of Mont saint -Anne. World Cup cross country racing has taken place here from 1991 and every year since, except for in 1998 and 2010, when the venue hosted the World Championships. And we go down to the start line then. Ice vest ready, but really hot here this afternoon. It is. Uh, yesterday we had like 28 degrees, but today they said uh, 32 degrees, so uh, and if you imagine yesterday it was really warm, yeah. it's even hotter today. Hot enough to affect the riders during the race? At least uh, they have to take care about the nutrition and the drinks. So the humidity as well, always a problem here. One of the, uh, one of the sweatiest World Cups of the year. It is, uh, it says only 27 degrees, but uh, it feels <laughs> much warmer. Here's Emily Batty. Home sole race for her today. She wants to, there would be no more fitting place for her to take her first ever World Cup win. And she is on the form at the moment to do it. Alessandra Keller on the front row again, always strong in a cross country short track. He won one this year, fourth overall in the World Cup as well. So, uh, having an amazing season, Bart. And she's still in the 23. Incredible. Erin Huck, former American national champion. 37 years old now. Great ride in Friday short track, sees her on the front row. Barbara Benko, 28 years old, Ghost Factory racing rider. A fifth place on the podium, actually, in World Cup Albstadt earlier in the season. Here comes the four-time Olympian, twice on mountain bikes, twice on skis. Incredibly ta talented woman, Katarina Nash, great to see her back at World Cup. Even greater to see her on the front row. Yeah, amazing how she did it like that. Without any UCI points and a good result in the short track Friday, first row start. Take Corny, the under 23 overall World Cup winner from last year. Brave performance from her again in short track. What will Hugo like today? Yolanda Neff, the number one plate on the front of her bike, the series leader, the world champion, the European champion. Always a smile on her face. Annika Langbad, the last end to come to the line. 2016 world champion. The winner of the Cape Epic this year as well. That huge stage race down in South Africa. And definitely a massive day in the saddle for her and Yolanda. It's decision time, really, in it this is. World Cup. Yeah. A lot of points today. 250 for the win. As it is with Brando. A little bit further back on the fourth row there. Ace Anatova. How's that finger, Bart? Yeah, it feels pretty well. Uh, she quit the national championships race. That was the week after Andorra. She did uh, get that short track in Andorra and also the cross country with a broken uh, ping. But uh, after that, she uh, had to take a, a cast around it to heal, to, for better healing. Otherwise, it would uh, disturb her. Uh, coordination with it. So there's your start list, Leah Davison. Oh, Leah Davison, apparently I've heard her mum's here. So keep your ears open, fingers crossed. Looking she looking forward makes it. to we're, see her we are all and hear forward. her as well. We are all looking forward to that. Hopefully we do get to see Leah Davison's mum. So six laps of this race then, this plus a start loop. A start loop, yes, and uh, six laps. The start loop is like the same course as the short track from last Friday. That'll bring back bad memories for some of the riders in Bart. It hurt on Friday, it'll definitely hurt again now. It will hurt from the start on. The 
penultimate World Cup of 2018 is about to get going then. Here we go. And it will be frantic straight off the line as everyone fights for position. There's a lot of single track on this uh, course here in Montsenan, so track position probably more important than, than normal, I would think. Yeah, definitely it is. Uh, that climb before La Beatrice, the, probably the most famous uh, descent of all the courses that we have in World Cup uh, series. Um, before that, that's a really steep one with a lot of hairpins where it's very difficult for the riders if you are in a bad position to continue your ride. You will see that later on. So this is the start loop. It's wide, it's open. And probably long enough for the riders to find their right position. Right, Yella Benamoyma coming up on the outside there, Bart. She did pretty well in that short track from last uh, Friday. Finished 11th. Yeah. She won here last year. She won the World That's Cup. That's right, she did indeed, year. yeah. She loves this course. She'll be motivated for today. Plenty of climbing on it for her as well. It's yeah, a, a very it steep climbing. It's very technical steep climbing it yeah. is over here. Barbara Benko, who is leading. Yolanda Neff there in second place. Kate Courtney, third. Annika Langford, fourth. There's Emily Batty, closest to us on the blue bike. So not too far back. Long way to go in this race, of course. Even out on the first lap properly yet. No, it wasn't Langford, sorry, Langford is a bit further down there, around eight. Tries to move up a little bit right now in these corners. So this is the double tech feed zone, which the riders have to take twice a lap. The only place they're allowed outside assistance during the race. So Banco leading. Good job, Annika. Here is Annika Langford, with a red there. and a red cross on her jersey. Langford riding with a bit of urgency there, Bart, to get yeah. back up to the front. She knows that as well. She I wonder how she move. got back. The Just start is always difficult. If you have a, like, if you can't find your pedal immediately, you will lose immediately, like, uh, four or five uh, yeah. places. So, uh, and just a yeah, little small mistakes in that first few hundred meters will cost a lot of places already. So, but she's fighting hard for that. Now it's more time to get to the front. Across the line they go then. In the Gand in fourth. Smith, the Canadian there, in fifth place at the moment. Keller down in tenth. Talbot 12th. And he last. 18th for her at the moment, Marvel Stofska, 21st. But the speed is really high immediately from the start on. It certainly is. Surprisingly quick, actually, in this heat. Although uh, altitude, heat, nothing really seems to slow these riders down. No, no, it's true. <laughs> it is. It's true, it's like yeah. that. They don't think about it, probably they don't feel it either. No, that's right. Certainly not on this opening lap. So Benko setting the pace out front at the moment. From here on, they go to that new part that they add to the course. They cut one of the main climbs, but uh, they brought in uh, a very nice part of it where they're going right now. Yolanda Neff second behind Barbara Banco. Yeah, this part, it's a, bit of, a little bit of a loose end, actually, especially when it's dry. It has been dry the last three days, so we had a lot of rain last Thursday still. It uh, keeps a while to uh, have a dry course, especially under the trees, but uh, on these sections where it's open, where the sun uh, can touch the ground, it dries up pretty quick. And this part is a bit sandy as well. But three of the six, top six weren't at the Europeans on Tuesday. I mean, how telling is that race going to be on this race? I mean, it's, it's not only that race, it's all, also the travel that they have to do on, yeah. on Wednesday. And it's, it's, it's pretty late, especially when you know there's a six-hour time difference for the European riders with uh, Canada. And probably that's the worst thing for the riders, that that race on Tuesday wouldn't affect the riders too much. No, it's the travel and the jet lag, yeah, of course. Yeah, even more, I think. You know, six or seven hours difference to most of... Uh, most of Europe. So this is the new part of the track. It was, I believe, in the course, what, nine or ten years ago. It's been missing for a long time, but... Yeah, I think at the last World Championships we had here, 2010, yeah. this part was in it as well. Really nice technical drop into a big kind of bomb hole and out again. Smith 
Hayley Smith. Yeah, Hayley yep. Smith, Norco Factory racing rider, the Canadian. Strong ride from her so That's far. That's Catherine Nash for the Cliff team. So that first row start in the gun. Fourth place. Langbad right up to fifth. Now there she is with the uh, white cross on her back. She knows she can't afford to let Neff get ahead of her too far and, and vice versa. They'll be playing a game of cat and mouse this afternoon. Amy Smith, the last rider of this first group, where Barbara Bank was still leading. And Smith, the top Canadian at the moment. Emily Bassi a little bit further back. A good start for Kate Gooden, too. She's been having a strong season, actually, Hayley Smith, but it's like the uh, top 20 at most of the World Cup so far. Best result, that 13th in Andorra. Barbara Benko leads then. The cows inside the top ten as well, the former World Cup overall winner. Slowly getting back, but can't use the cows. Yeah, she won that World Cup overall uh, in uh, 2015. I think it was th th 2013. I think it was 2013, yeah. It's a long time ago, but uh, yeah, after that, we haven't seen too much of her. No, 2013, she was the World Cup overall champion. Took two wins that year, but she was also the European champion that year and fifth at the World Championships. So uh, nice to see her back at the sharp end where she belongs. So six riders from first group. The Tango is who's leading. Jelana Neff taking it a bit easy, looks like that. Same she did the race last Tuesday. She attacked after one lap, and probably she loves to be in the first position when the descent starts. Yeah, because she can, uh, she'll be able to pull out some time there with uh, less effort than anywhere else on the track. How important is hydration today, Bart? It's uh, very important. Uh, it's uh, very hot, so riders, they will take uh, a bottle first with some uh, energy into it, maybe some electrolytes and uh, probably a backup bottle, as they call it, with, uh, to cool down. To spray some water in the neck, to cool down the legs, the wrists. And that's also very important. Heading now towards the Beatrice and uh, that horrific climb right in front of it, zigzags up. We call it the Alp d'Huez. The Alp d'Huez. <laughs> the nickname of that climb, probably. <laughs> it's a really hard one. Emily Batty here in front. Langbad looked like she got her foot in, but yeah. No problems there. Drop back a little bit, but she's right back where she needs to be now. Yeah, in the top top six, so six riders leading right now, and she's one of them. No Pauline Fran Prevo here, no Gunrita Dala, but they're missing. No, Gunrita, she's preparing herself for the World Championships. Uh, she won uh, Val Nord. Um, of course, she's in a great shape. She did pretty well at the Europeans last Tuesday, too, and some of the riders, they decide not to come over to Canada. I think Pauline, she's, I don't know why she's not doing this race, probably too much. Uh, I mean, three races uh, for the European riders in six days' time, it's a lot. Like uh, even Annika Langford, she didn't do the Europeans to save some energy for today's race, but uh, like Yolanda, she's well. doing everything. And it doesn't bother her at all, it looks like that. And the top three now riding away a little bit from the rest of the pack there. Benko definitely not looking like she can go with them. Hayley Smith and Indigand looking like they might try and get back on that leading group. Is this going to come down to a three rider race already? Wow, look, look at this, Kate Courtney right in there as well. It looks like that, a little bit, but I mean, it's just the first lap. Yeah. So a lot of things can still going on and especially after a few climbs, we will know more. So two specialized riders. And here they come onto this horrible steep climb. L'Enfer de saint anne Full suspension for Yolanda Neff. Yeah, good, good call on this track. I was speaking to Maxime Marat earlier in the week, and he said he loves this track, but he said it's so hard, not just on them, but on the bikes. He said you have to ride around and really protect the wheels, the rims, the tyres, everything, you know? It's, it is, yeah. It's a rough old track as you... Uh, yeah, even these uh, hairpins over here, it's not only that they are very sharp and very steep here, Annika Langford of the bike running. There are also a lot of big rocks in, in these corners, which makes it even more difficult to ride. Small gear for 
Kay Courtney. Langrad gets back on board. Which is also very difficult on uh, a steep climb like that. That was off. impressive to get back on there, actually. I thought she might have been pushing up to the top. Thankfully, it is a little flatter between the uh, hairpins. If a rider is uh, just in front of you and he slowed down, you have to slow down as well. If he makes a mistake, you have to get off the bike too. Kate Courtney did win the under 23 World Cup here a year ago. So she's won here before. Can she do it today? Against the world's very best. Hayley Smith. Barbara oh, Benko, small that's... mistake. And as you said, Bart, the corners. In fact, they look more technical than they've ever been. More of that rock coming through. It is, yeah. Well, oh. Anna Taubo off the bike, running, pushing the bike. Back on the bike, it's really difficult. Katarina Nash doing well so far, Bart, there. Yeah, good start. Let's see where she can finish. It's not a short track. It's a bit more cross country. Here they come into La Beatrice then for the first time. But you're on the net already. I guess she already did it. <laughs> I don't think she'll have been hanging out, hanging about down there. But thankfully, dry a lot, lot easier in the dry than it is the wet bar. Ooh. I thought it was a crash of uh, Kate Courtney, but it wasn't. No, the angle it did look like yeah, she was leaving, for that. leaving the track at high speed. No, she's exactly. fine. She's okay. There and there's Neff. The yeah, Neff in the distance. So Neff already pulling a gap. Good coach, Switzerland. Well, of course. Landon Neff not feeling the effects of travel and uh, racing three times in the last few days. Amazing. She's in a winning mood. That is a, that is a fact, yeah. The way how she uh, got that uh, title, the European title, the way she took it, was actually impressive. Very nice style on the bike, everything in control. Two specialized ladies. Like a Kate they did Cape Epic together as well, the beginning of the season, which they won. So they know each other pretty well. I think so far, if Kate can make it on this place where she is right now, her best result in the World Cups. But it's still a long way. This is only the first lap, six laps they have to do. Lamamont at second climb of the course, which is a, a hard one too. A lot of rocks you can see. Luckily it's dry. Super tough climb, super tough descent as well. And the field opening up on this opening lap, perhaps more than I would have expected it to. Yeah, because of this but lady, at, Yolanda. Look how far she is, Bart. Dictating the pace today, isn't she? It is, it is. Amy Smith. Ford here. This is dangerous for everyone else because if Yanda does get a bit of a buffer, yeah. you know, and she can hold her own on the climbs. I can't see anyone really being quicker than her. Not just on the descents, but even on parts of track like this, just everywhere. She can just nip a little bit of time. And if you have a little bit of a gap, you can slow down uh, a little bit as well and save a bit of energy because we know from Yolanda, she can blow up at the beginning of yeah. the race. But if she has... Uh, Especially fear, in the heat. Yeah, but if she has a fear gap, she will slow down a little bit. Yeah, 16 seconds already now, that early in the race. It's Pretty impressive. It's a lot. So that fourth place, it's already 48 seconds back. So the advantage will be next if she leaves here in Emily, the positions as they are. Emily Betty on 10. Go Nearly on, a minute go. back, Bart. Is that even repairable at this point? Yeah, there will be uh, still a lot of changes after a while. Uh, I mean, but on that, it looks like she's flying. She's pushing it really hard, opening the gaps between the riders directly. Well, the shirts are coming off for Yolanda as she whistles into the Patriot. Which is where Sam Gaze crashed, I believe. I mean, yeah, don't think about that. Oh, oh whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, we know uh, it's that's not the part of the track you don't want your foot in your pedal, that's yeah, for sure. We already discussed a little bit before. Yolanda uh, Yolanda is so strong in the descents, in the technical descents over here, and Annika Langford is a bit more struggling with that. She showed the difference, especially at the pace today that Neff's setting out the front. 
another, and, and again a foot out of Anika onto this horrible, difficult camber actually as well. It's uh, very off camber that part of the track. Courtney can tend to sit behind her teammate at the moment, the two specialised women here. Yeah, it looks like Kate Courtney can go a bit faster over here. She's pushing it a bit to Annika. I hope she stays in control and not getting nervous of, about her. No. Riding that close behind her. Is it, do you think it's um, difficult for a Kate? Will she feel bad about overtaking Annika if she could or not? Because yeah, teammates, yeah, right, maybe I mean, a little bit. And she's yeah, it won't so help her in the well. overall, And it won't help her in the overall World Cup. That's what I meant if she gets in yeah, front of Annika. That's of right, Annika, too, yeah. You know? So probably there are some team tactics uh, in between these two to discuss and what they already did. So Annika, she's the second in the overall. Here comes Anna Tauber coming through. Alexandra Keller behind her. Great to see the crowds back at the World Cup races. So many people here yesterday for the down and so many again today for this cross country. Different yep. lines through the rocks. Yeah, great atmosphere here uh, besides the course with these people around. So one lap has done already by Yolanda Neff. She's coming to the finish line already. One lap down, look at that. Lap time of 16 minutes and 16, 13.44, excuse me, for the lap. That's the overall time there, 16.16, including that uh, short start loop. But Neff, the world champion, riding away at the moment here in Montaintan, Canada. She's won here twice before, 2014 and 2015. And she's twice the overall World Cup winner, Yolanda Neff. Annika Langvad, this woman here in the red and white, yet to be the overall World Cup winner. And lost 15 seconds between that last split and the finish line. So Neff definitely on a different pace to everyone at the moment. Definitely this, uh, but, and also compared to the women under 23, which most of the time the first lap you can compare the women under 23 category with the elite category, it's uh, a lot of 45 seconds faster, Yolanda. So she's uh, really flying today. <laughs> That's what we see. Yeah, I met her at the uh, lift in the hotel last night with a chat, and I said, How can you, you know, you must be exhausted. You, 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 you won on Tuesday, you travelled Wednesday, you raced Friday in short track. And and she was really happy with uh, her performance there, she said, you know, to get second really surprised her, actually. And then she said, but I do feel quite tired today, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, hardly <laughs> surprising, really. <laughs> yeah, not at all. <laughs> it's normal. She's exactly. a human being. She's a human being. Yeah. I mean, the jet lag will kick in at some point. Yeah, so. already. But it's that thing, yeah. It doesn't look like it's kicking in right now, does it? Not at all. And if she has a gap like this, like 30 seconds, 31 seconds, she can slow down a little bit and uh, taking it a bit more easier. Just that will cover. help her as well to have steady lap times. I mean, it, it wouldn't be surprise me either here, Bart, if we saw punches and technical problems as well. They may play a part. They do. They have done here in the past quite a lot. Fingers yeah, crossed they don't today. These days as well, um, yeah, most of the teams, they prepare the tires pretty well. Even there are new systems coming up to protect uh, the tires against the uh, snake bites. Yeah. With uh, like a noodle inside, so it's like a foam roll, what you, what you put inside. And do you use those in cross country yeah, as well? Yeah, we use these in cross country oh, well, as well these days. You sacrifice that weight. Yeah, it helps a lot to uh, to avoid the punctures and uh, yeah, all these little things. Yeah, brings, that, brings the two to another level. One thing's for sure, mountain bikes have never been better than they are right now to ride. I mean, right, they're incredible. You don't even need a chain guide to keep a chain on with the uh, narrow wide chain ring. So Neff storming away with this one at the moment, the cross rider. Impressive, the way she's riding right now. On her own, not waiting for anybody else. And why should she? That's right, if you're feeling this good, go for it. And she certainly is. Let's see what that gap is now then. Of course, with Langfart, uh, on that second place with uh, a lot of points for her, if she can finish it like that. Kate Courtney behind her, riding together. Can they work together? 
it's hard on a course like this. Cape Epic is a different story. And you have long flats in between as well. Here goes up and down, technical parts, a lot of corners, totally different. And the gap staying about the same bar, so. But it helps a little bit if you have a teammate around you. It motivates to go fast. Well, these two are used to ride into each other. They won the Cape, Cape Epic, didn't they, earlier in the year as they a team? Did. So they had six days, is it, together? Eight. Eight? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> About, uh, I wouldn't want to short change you a couple of days. 35 hours uh, together during the week, or only on the bike, so, but even they sleep together uh, no way. for the whole week. That's so a pretty like, tough week, huh? It's like a 24 hours uh, being together every day, for eight days in a row. You better have a teammate you get on with. It is, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of it's the most nest. important things. It is, huh? You yeah. do a good race. Yeah, of course it is. So, Kate so. Cordy was third. Then we saw her go right there with her teammate. Tauber in the gun in fourth and fifth. Landon F through the tech and feed zone, covering herself in uh, as much cold water as she can. 30 seconds a gap she has. Will she just try and control that now, I'd imagine? Definitely she will control it in the descents, uh, so uh, the, 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 the climbs will be maybe a bit more difficult for her, but she can recover in these descents and give it all she has for the climbs. Both drinking a little bit and throw the bottle away immediately, not carrying it with them. It's weight what they don't need for these steep climbs. So riding without any bottle, two times a lap they can have a, a drink, that's how they do it. Specialized ladies. Langrad can stay there in second place, of course, the points. She wouldn't lose too many points, especially if she took the win in short track on Friday over the, over the, you know, on the whole weekend as a whole, but still a long way to go. Just lap two now, that high cadence of Neff out front. It might what you said, uh, that uh, Yolanda Neff will pay the price for uh, these hard days this yeah. week. Uh, so even after a, a fair start, what she did, so far she can uh, blew up. And uh, of course, she felt exhausted already uh, yesterday after uh, doing the Europeans on Tuesday, that short track on Friday. In between, they have their long travel, the jet lag. And she might blow up, uh, you never know. No, it's true. But she has a fear gap. She must be feeling good anyway at the moment. There's Elizabeth Brandau. The number nine on the bike. In 20th place at the moment, Brandau. Irina Kalantieva, two riders behind her, the uh, former world champion as well. Yeah, from Kalantieva, we knew she's always strong at the world championships, uh, which are coming up in about four weeks' time in yeah. Switzerland. Landsreide. She'll start building up for that now. Yeah. But she actually said that when we uh, interviewed her at round one in South Africa. that She said, South Africa, this is way, way too early in the year for me. Wait till the end of the year. There's the Austrian champion. Also. Elizabeth Ossel, former overall World Cup winner. Yep. Back to the numbers two and three in the race. Courtney. Courtney's going by Langbad. Langbad. Wow. Didn't look like she was going to have any of that. No. That was interesting. <laughs> I thought she might like Kate Courtney to set the pace for her, but yeah, especially it depends. But I mean, we don't know if she's been. Would, well, let me ask you this. Would it be ridiculous to think that the team would issue orders, like, you know, to say, don't beat, don't beat Annika today, don't take points away from her? Yeah, but I don't know if uh, do, that do doesn't that? change anything. Uh, I mean, also for Kate, could need the points. Uh, yeah, needs Yeah, no, I mean, you see it in Formula One and other sports. I don't know yeah. if it really happened in mountain biking so much. <laughs> I guess you well, don't definitely, know. They, definitely, they speak about it. Yeah, yeah, they will, yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. Especially when it comes to a stage like this, where almost uh, yeah, each race will be a decision for the overall. Yes, of course, that's right. The overall yeah. would be the ultimate prize as so well. They will have some team orders. Langford again off the bike and pushing it. So Look at that, yeah. Even it shows how difficult it is if you are on a position where you can ride your bike and nobody's in front of you. She's struggling with that, with these corners still. I can see. You land a neff ahead of them. Yeah, 30 seconds on a climb like this, it's still touchable. And you can see how steep that is. Look how flat these riders' backs are. All the way over the front wheel just to try and keep it on the ground. Yeah, that's the most difficult thing uh, on a climb like this, to control your bike with a small gear. A lot of rocks, big rocks. You see, ah, she slipped away again. 
foot on the ground, start accelerate again, difficult. Well, while this battle is full in rages, we are going to go down to specialised team manager Candice. She's with Rick. Candice, we're seeing uh, Kate and Annika together. Is there any protocol set in place for what they can, can they help each other out at all? I think it's probably limited what, what help they, they could give to each other, but for sure the, the girls are going to work together and the main objective is to win the race. Uh, so for sure we need to close the gap. Um, from there, I guess it's kind of first lady to the line, um, but for sure at the moment the, the main objective is to, is to catch Yolanda and then we kind of see things how it go from there. It's white hot down here in the feed zone. Do you think that'll affect things at all today? For sure. There's uh, lots of fluids. We saw in the U23 men's race, they went through lots of fluids. So it's, it's super hot today. They're going to be drinking a lot. So it's also going to be a base, uh, race of nutrition today and attrition and kind of to see who can manage to get to, to the finish line in one piece. Candice, okay, good luck today. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, wise words there, uh, word, wise words there from Candice, I think. You know, saying it will be a war of attrition it's physical it's mechanical here in Montserrat as well and of course the heat will play a massive factor it is absolutely scorcho out there yeah and the specialized team had the experience from yesterday as well where Sam Gage they had a huge crash in the training so uh, well, that's right exactly anything you know could trip any of these riders up this descent now that Emily Bat is about to tackle look how difficult it is La Beatrice look. that's the name of the descent it's fierce Oh, look how bad it is. I mean, Batty there locking up the front wheel as well on that descent. She's used to ride uh, a full suspension bike. She's actually, she's on a hard wheel, so she's surprising me why she's using that bike instead of that full suspension of track. On this track, you would think a full suspension bike would play dividends, but... It is, yeah. And it didn't look good to me how she was no. taking this descent. Of course, it's a very difficult one. It's incredibly difficult. I mean, look, ride is really Catherine tight in, but... Nash. So Emily was probably, you know, not so far off really uh, getting that wrong. You see how bumpy it is, how difficult it is to control the bike. The front suspension is doing a lot of work. Oh, locking that front wheel up over those rocks with it going left. Big skills to Emily Batty to ride that out. It looks like the, the tyre pressure is way too high, but that's just what we see and yeah, easy to judge. For sure it's uh, not too, too much. So lap two of six here in Montsentan, Canada. And that second hard climb of the track. The Annika Langhardt is leading in the, ahead of uh, Courtney, second place for her. Oh, he's in the pedals round that hairpin there. Well, you can hear him chanting Batty from the crowd there. Fourth place right now. Can she come back to the two specialized ladies? Anna Tauber on fifth place, followed by Indergaan, sixth. So behind these two, Langford, Courtney, everything is still open. I think the podium, I think that second place is still open. Left pulls another 10 seconds out, Bart. It's crazy how fast she's going. In the heat as well. Yep, everything by herself. And with all that hair on top of her head, making her even hotter. <laughs> she has a lot of blonde hair. She certainly does. The most of the women have. So, Alessandra Kalla there. Winner of one short track race this year. The youngest rider of the whole peloton. And fourth overall in the World Cup at the moment. Fantastic year she's having, this young Swiss rider. Jana Bilamoyna. Good performance for her, Bart. Yeah, she won here last year. That's right. She didn't do the European Championships last Tuesday. Did pretty well in a short track from Friday. So she's on a move. Up to seventh, yeah, exactly. Now, we know that she loves climbing. There's plenty of that on this track. And she has the endurance. Most of the time, she's her second part of the race is the strongest. And she broke that hip in training in the winter, but... Yeah, very sad. completely over it now, though. It doesn't cause her any problems. I guess her fitness is the yeah, problem. She yeah, she lost, lost a lot of uh, time in training. And uh, there's no pain from that hip. It's OK. Once in a while, it's uh, disturbing a little bit. Is it? Said. Is yeah, it? yeah. It's not, not, not completely healed in the, the right way, the yeah. right direction. So still, uh, some of the iron pins or the wire had to get out uh, during... It comes out this winter, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, this winter. But, uh, uh, she she finished already second in Alpstadt, so uh, yeah, looks like there's nothing wrong. But li like as an athlete, everything has to be 100% or even or even better. And every little thing which disturbs you will affect you as well in the performance. 
Yeah, on the net, cooling down. Good water. Kate Courtney. Just outside San Francisco on the, the other side of North America. Is she in front or ahead? That's what I was just wondering as well, actually, but... Looks like she's second place. It does, yeah. It does. And she opened the gap in the descent. Annika Langvad. So, first place goes one way. Kate Courtney comes towards us. Yep, she's second. There's Annika Langvad now in third. So riders, they know exactly where they are on the track. They can see each other. But they have a look to the side. Doesn't look like there's any team orders in place. No. Yeah, there are actually two tactics what you can uh, do. I mean, uh, with Courtney, who is fourth in the overall. Well, but hang on. Yolanda Neff's in charge here in Montenegro, and we'll be right back. June 5th, 1971. Dear Judy, Sharon, and Becky, regardless of any opinions I have about this war or any other, it is hard to think about the killing that I will be doing. My father was shot down in the Vietnam War, and ever since his remains were identified, I've been planning an expedition to ride the entire length of the Ho Chi Minh Trail to search for the place where his plane went down. Ultra endurance mountain biker Rebecca Rush on the trail of her father's fate. I can't find a way through. Blood Road. No now available on Red Bull TV. Welcome back to Montsentan for the penultimate stop of this year's Mercedes-Benz UCI Cross Country World Cup. Just joined us. And again, the Neff out front. Everyone else chasing. And again, uh, 15 seconds between uh, that the split time and the finish line. And it means uh, most of it is that first descent where she gained a lot of time all the time. Betty on fourth. Really, Neff did the damage right on that. First lap, didn't she? Yeah, but now she's gaining a lot of time uh, every descent again. She's so fast on the downhill. So on a Tauber. Keller across the line. Together with Bellamoyna. Two teammates, Tauber and Bellamoyna. Doesn't look like Bellamoyna's hanging around for her teammate, though. Looked like she was going straight to the yeah, front. She's on a move. Jana Bellamoyna. She looks like she's riding her way herself into this one. Nice, Bart. Yeah, that's how she normally just the race is uh, sometimes a bit struggling in the, the start to find her right position. But it's going better and better during the race. No team tactics between uh, the two riders. You're the team manager. <laughs> what have you told him, Bart? <laughs> <laughs> you do the best that you can do. <laughs> Nothing he no, can do. No, no team orders. I Nothing. mean, uh, <laughs> on the top, but didn't do the short track last Friday. She's not uh, going for the overall standing, which actually she was four before last Friday, but uh, she didn't take care. She didn't care about uh, the points, he said, and that short track and likes to spend all the energy for this race, for the cross country. Well, she did say, you know, that it affects her performance, yeah, right? Yeah, it does, yeah. Not, not for everybody, as you can see, uh, you're on the map. And what a season Ann Talbot's had. Three times she's been on the podium this year. Yeah. Incredible. It is, yeah. Didn't have her best race last Tuesday. She did Europeans, which uh, Jana didn't do. So there's, uh, there's Anna Kalangvad in third place at the moment. Chasing her teammate there, Kate Courtney in the Stars and Stripes kit. You see, if you lose that that time in the descent, it costs you so much energy to get back on the wheel. Kate Courtney, the American national champion. First year women elite category. Second place for her. Come on, Leah! Well, with... Neff leading like this, and with uh, that's, that's, Leah, that's Leah. That's Leah. There it is. I hear. 
She must be here somewhere. We can hear Leah's mum, Leah Davison's mum. Cheering on all the Americans. Not quite as fiercely as she uh, cheers on her own daughter. Catherine Pendrell from the Cliff team. Here's Emily Betsy. Catherine Pendrell. The most uh, successful here with four wins, uh, her and Julie Furtado. Here comes Emily Batty. Yeah, point, if they stay as they are with Annika Langbad in third place, the, the points gap will open up to 182 points going to that final. Now, that's huge. But you can win, the, like, 375 that's true. points I forgot for the weekend. Yeah, so I did forget the short track, I mean, excuse it's me. It's still wide open, even after this race, if it stays like it is right now. And the one thing we know for sure is that Langvad will be mega competitive in the short track. Probably Neff too, though, if we, if we look at last Friday's race. And La Bresse, the final, uh, it's a new location, a new venue where the race will be. Jana Bellemoyna on her move, fifth place right now. So that's already the podium. And the Tauber, Tauber teammates coming and with her. They're really fighting to go with her as well. Tauber riding with some real urgency there. This is the most fast part of the course. Flowy, up and down all the time. Back along this camera towards the uh, start-finish area before they go out onto the other loop of this track. Already on lap three, but they're rattling the laps off here. It goes really quick, isn't it? And it's a nice course for the riders too. It's, it's, it's not a boring course at all. You have to be concentrated all the time. Especially the descent, they are very fast, technical. But also these climbs, they are, they are steep, technical, hard to ride. There's Yolanda. Everything in control at the moment. As it has been really all week long. European yeah. champion. Second in short track Friday. And Bart, you know, the biggest race undoubtedly of the year for Yolanda will be the World Championships in Lenza Heide. She even yeah, has, a, has an apartment there. I mean... Hometown race for will, her. Will she, will she hope to now continue this form right through? Is that how it would work? Or will she need to kind of rest no, up? No, it's more like that, to continue uh, with this form. Uh, she, she has, she's in great shape. But she showed last year also she was very strong at the end of the season instead of the beginning. But uh, it looks like... Yeah, also this week, how oh, she's uh, performing uh, Tuesday, Friday, today again. So she has to take care of it, uh, doing not too much. Well, it is Yolanda Neff who has the fastest lap so far, 13 minutes 44. And the Kalangbad's second fastest, but it's 14 minutes 12 seconds. So a little way off, really. Yeah, the way how Yolanda is uh, starting the race, it's impressive. They're very fast all the time. That's the gap between second and third. How exposed is it out there, Bart? They must be glad to get in the trees here as well. Yeah, here on that uh, oh. ski slope. Horrible on these on long the grass. It's, uh, yeah, there's no wind, almost no wind. And Betty over there on that climb. Actually, that climb starts already from the bottom where we have to more, more like... Uh, the, the, the buildings of this ski area. Fourth place first, so it would be another podium finish, but it doesn't look like a real climb, but if you have to ride it over here, it's uh, pretty steep. Then yeah. plenty of encouragement, there's her husband. Jana Bellemoyna, former professional himself. They met when he was 16, by incredible. On they're a young age. They're a real team. <laughs> and here's Jana Bellemoyna then. Looking to me, but incredibly strong. Yeah, she's looking good. Anna Tauber just behind her teammates. CC Sand American Eagle team. I saw a uh, picture of a full suspension bike, an American Eagle full suspension bike. We had the first one in the in the 23 category, David Norderman, who finished four today. Right on, they're out on it. So we are working on that. Hope to see more of these in uh, La Bresse next time. So, Kate Courtney comes actually from Man Mount Tam, lives in Mount Tam. At the front of her uh, parents' house, it literally fills the view. It's incredible. That's where mountain biking began. She is the all-American mountain biker. The last time that there was an American winner of a, of a World Cup cross-country in the females 
Incredibly, it was Alison Dunlap back in 1999, nearly 20 years ago. It's, it's time to have a new it US is. winner in the World Cup. And Kate would be perfect. Yeah, I think she's able to do that. You can see the repack where mountain biking is uh, believed to have begun actually from her house. Langvad, <laughs> looking pretty comfortable there in third, I think. Better than the lap before yeah. here on this climb. Maybe finding that uh, starting to settle into a bit of a rhythm. It was pretty frantic that early lap. And of course, you know, Bart, when you have to get off your bike like that and push, it just sends your head into a bit of a spin, doesn't it? Yeah, it disturbs your rhythm and also your confidence as well. Uh, yeah, you, you try and do better next lap. Here it but is. If then. somebody is behind you, it's, uh, it's not a way what you like to show. La Beatrice. Nicely ridden by Kate Courtney there. It's a statement in mountain biking, La Beatrice. It really is, huh? Yeah. <laughs> when it's dry, it's okay, but when it's wet, it's so bad. No problems for Annika Langvard. Rode it really nicely as well. A short travel, suspension, bike making all the difference. So much easier on the on the sense like that it's only what 100 mil of travel yeah 100 mil in front and uh, we are too but it makes so much difference and here already towards the top of the next climb is Yolanda Neff the world and european champion at the moment here you can see also how soft the rear tire is it's going smoothly, smoothly yeah. over the rocks as you mentioned it then it was almost bouncing with every pedal stroke yeah. the prior pressures are unbelievable what would Jana be running, do you know? 1.1. Uh, 1.1? Yeah, yeah, bar. Ah. bar. PSI, it's about 17, I think, 18? 17 yeah. PSI. Uh, PSI. Unbelievable. Yeah. It's incredible. But, yeah, it's very low. But it's, but yeah, it's, even I think it's very low, but for the women, the, 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 their weight is only like 45 kilos, uh, 50 kilos. No way. It's a uh, huge difference as well. Eh? And, you know, it, the tire to be that soft, I always thought it would create more drag, you know, like we see the road riders with 120 or whatever in there, 120 psi in their time. But actually, it's proven that it's faster because yeah. the tire literally just uh, deforms and rolls over things faster than having to sort of bump up over it, as yeah. it were. So especially the, the, you need to have the traction on your rear yeah. tire as well, on, on part like this, where it's also very slippery in between the rocks that on that loose gravel. Even uh, imagine when it's bad, then you then even they are riding lower pressure. So Betty on fourth. Not that far behind these two. No, she's not, she's coming and you can hear the crowd chanting Batty on this climb. But also Jana Bellamoyna, she's not that far behind her. How much difference, Bart, will that crowd listen to him getting on at Batty there, really cheering her on. How much difference will uh, that, that make? Help, that helps a lot. Massively. Yeah, massively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You will give more than normally. Yeah, you, you see most of the time, Hometown races, uh, there the riders perform even better. And Bella Moyna is coming, I think. Fifth place for her right now. She loves this course, she loves these steep climbs. Can she come back? She's already on the podium, but is there more left? Everything is still open in the race. And Otalba, the ice skater. She's going to be doing the 200 kilometer race again this winter, I think, she told us on the ice. She loves to do speed skating. After her uh, mountain bike season, she starts speed skating again. That's actually kind of a background, right? Yeah, she's coming from speed skating. Amazing. Imagine 200k on uh, <laughs> speed skating. It's crazy. Really long. For her, no problem. Six at the moment. Keller, seventh, riding together. On the table, first year in the 23. Keller, actually, she's still in the 23. Oh, fighting to get into the single track first. It's going to be Keller that gets it this time. But Neff has extended the lead by another five seconds. You can see it now. And that gap between uh, Emily Batty and Langvad has come down from 30 seconds to just 15. So Batty on the move. Is she going to drag Bella Moyna? Tauber and those riders with her as well, up to the uh, specialised duo of uh, Courtney and Langvad in second and third. Here comes Neff through the tech feed zone. Going to be taking on uh, bottles of water just to tip over herself as well. Doing everything they can to cool themselves off here. Still three more laps to go. Little way to go left in this race. Yep, that's absolutely right, but... 
Still not the halfway point. Things can change very quickly in Montsenan. It is, especially uh, in these conditions. It's uh, very hot. And if you blow up in the beginning of the race, you will pay for that at the end. Neff storms on then. Regardless of everything, lap three is in the books. Faultless so far. And she's looking good, but even getting up out of the saddle to sprint over that line. She's on exceptional form at the moment. She is. Uh, she's gaining a, a lot of time all, all the time. Every lap again uh, in that descent. You know, let's see if she can did it again. Let's not forget just what a talent she is. She is the youngest woman ever to take the overall World Cup title in the league. She did that as an under 23 rider back in uh, 2014. He's more like the Nina Schroeder in the men's category. Yeah. And even, even if, you, if you have a look to her season so far, yeah, it's really impressive. It really is, actually. Yep, she's national, an incredible national season. champion, European champion. She's Injured good. at the start of the year as well. Let's not forget had that crash, in, uh, that tangle with Pauline Fran Prevost, the absent Pauline Fran Prevost from this race. Emily Batty has a look over at her rear tyre. All looked good. Tries to carry on. But, um, you know, apart from that where she finished sixth, where she shouldn't have actually been riding, she won in Alstadt, second in Novia Mesto, third in Val de Sole, and then second again in Andorra. So, you know, not really outside the top three once she'd recovered from that, uh, from that broken collarbone. Across the line we go then. 45 minutes was the time for Yolanda Neff, so it'll be around an hour and a half, hour and 25 minutes. Took out another 17 seconds of Kate Cordy. One minute 19 now. Massive. All the time uh, in that, uh, that section to the finish line, which is most of it uh, descending, she's gaining a lot of time. So Langvad just 11 seconds back on her teammate now. Not too much. No, I, it's more like the same in the previous lap. But Betty C is coming back. So 19 seconds back from Langvad. For Emily Batty, she can't hang around because the, there's a lot of riders not so far behind her. You can just see, I think that'll be Yannabella Moyna next coming into shot. There she is, Yannabella Moyna, fifth at the moment. Two minutes, seven seconds behind. Still on the net. Oh, Myron with problems. Myron with problems. Teammate Yolanda Neff. Was that a puncture? Didn't really see this, what happened there at the start, but I would imagine it was. I didn't see a, cha a wheel change, but no. Uh, it might be a shifting problem too. Something yeah, it like that. could be. For a small, quick stop. No, it was a puncture. I've just had confirmation. So Keller and Taubo, six and seven, closely together. Great ride from Hayley Smith there in eighth place, but Canadian rider. That'll be her uh, best World Cup finish if you can stay there. <laughs> Having a good year, this Canadian in the World Cup racing. Three times already inside the top 20. There's Keller. Sixth place. One of the most powerful riders as well, but I would say in the women's yeah. category. Impressive how she won that short track race in Andorra. A couple of weeks ago. She's very strong. She's 22 years old, Alessandra Keller. And also uh, she's from Switzerland. She can do her home soil race at in the World Championships in the, in, in the 23 category. Oh, that's right, she'll have to drop back down. I'm so, looking forward to the world in Switzerland. It's going to yeah. be massive. They are the home of cross-country racing. I mean, this is going to be a big deal for all the Swiss riders, and there are many. It is, yeah. They have favorites in each category <laughs> they might win all the they might take all the gold with Nina Schurter in the men's category Yolanda Neff for the women in the 23 juniors they have really strong as well so Keller and Taubo closely together number six and seven in the race Taubo doing everything she can to get back on that wheel of Keller doesn't it look like she can uh, close that gap down that easily at the moment. 
So back to this uh, new old section. Which is really nice to ride for the riders. Fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun over here. <laughs> it's sandy at the moment, actually, these corners. They're pretty slippery, yeah. a bit loose sand. Riders have to be very careful with that. Because the, the, the rest of the course is totally different. This has a lot of rocks. This part doesn't have yeah, it's any like a rocks. Big sand pit. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's cool. Di different. And the World different. Championships in, uh, we say, in uh, Lenzerheide in Switzerland this year in the first weekend of September. World Championships next year are here in Montsantan. The third time this historic venue will have hosted them. That's got to be a record. Yeah, I think 1998 and 2010. That's right. Next year again. Amazing, 2020. Look forward to that one. So Kate Gourney and Nika Langford almost together again. Not really, but just a few seconds left. Yeah, definitely. Langbad, I would say, going to get on that back wheel of Courtney quite soon. It's been impressive watching Kate Courtney this year, but her first year in Elite. You can see that she's just getting more, gaining more confidence and, and definitely improving throughout the year. That's what I think, too. Uh, of course, uh, as a first year women elite, it's always hard, but for her, it doesn't see that there's any problem. Still goes training with her dad whenever possible. Teased her dad whether he was using an e-bike to keep her. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think he, even if he said no, he'd probably have to, wouldn't he? Yeah, I think so. He's <laughs> dead. He, these women are very, very <laughs> strong. <laughs> Amazingly strong. What can Emily Beth do when she come back? It looks like that. It's not that far. Behind the two specialized ladies. Incredible, yeah. Could she get on the back wheel then? Sometimes it's surprising what happened in the beginning of the race. Why she's not... What's happened over here? So, she slowed down a little bit, but... Perhaps, yes. No, it's not. Not too bad, but no, no, I don't think there was no. any problems there. No. I don't know if the pace is backed up, but... The coach giving her plenty of encouragement. Keller and Tauber together. So Tauber now on the back wheel of Keller, that's good. Close yeah. that gap down. In these sections you have a little bit of advantage if you are closely to the rider in front of you, a little bit of draft. And Tauber, sixth overall in this year's World Cup at the moment. Haley's, Keller, Keller in fourth, so... Haley Smith is not that far behind these two. So she might move up as well. Things are hotting up a little bit here. It's already hot enough, actually, outside. Taking a drink. Take some water to cool down. It's very important to take care about yourself for the whole race. Each, each feet zone again. So Yolanda already on, a, on her way to the top of the Beatrice. And uh, Annika Langbad now up to second and ahead of Kate Courtney. That's not a good sign. Looking back over her shoulder, Kate Courtney. With that fourth place, it's Betty. Emily Betty, there she is. And she closed the gap. Sometimes you can blow up, especially in the beginning of the race, also for Kate Courtney, young rider. If you feel strong in the beginning, even in these conditions, it's uh, very hard to continue that speed for the for all these laps all at the same time. So Batty, only 20 seconds off. Uh, it'll be Kate Courtney now in third place. Important move that for uh, Annika Langbad. 40 points difference between second and third. That's a 40 points that she might well need when it comes down to the wire in La Bresse. In just two weeks' time now, the finals of this year's World Cup. And Benko, who led at the start, now has pulled out of the race. We will endeavour to find out why. Oh, and the climb again. Langbad just keeping the wheels turning. And another rider with a puncture, Leah Davison now. That's a shame. Not affected the front runners, but plenty of punctures behind. And of course, it is something that you could well see for any of those top three, top four, anyone. Yeah, especially the rear wheel uh, takes a lot of time, even more than the front wheel. Yeah, takes again. It takes a bit of time. Her teammate, I think it's Catherine Pendrell in front of her. Yeah, there she is, Catherine going. 
Stefan Pendrel returning from injury earlier in the year broke a uh, arm. Yeah, the top of her arm here, the uh, humerus, excuse me. She's in 15th at the moment. Yolanda the Neff, the leader. And second climb, La Bomont. The bottom of that climb. Doesn't look to slow down to me, but that looks like just a great cadence up there. Well, you've got a feel for out there, though, in the... Yeah, that time is... Really in the sun. Horrible. It's a, it's a very hard one, especially when it comes to these hairpins at the top of the climb. That's Two just the there. beginning where she was. Jana Bellomoyna, fifth place at the moment. And this is L'Enfer de saint anne before La Beatrice, the climb before La Beatrice to descent. About 20 seconds, she is behind uh, Emily Batty, the Canadian, in front of her. Anatobo, again in front of Keller. Bellomoyna has done some damage to these two, though, but it wasn't so long ago they were right there with her, you know, she's overtook them and, and ridden off. Yeah, I think Jana Bellamoni is on her move to the... Maybe a second, third place. It's, I think that's still possible in a race like this. Two laps to go after this, but they're going to be the toughest two laps of this, tra of gonna, this race, that's for sure. It's going to be a hard race, these, la these last two laps. Battle for sixth. Yeah, it is. Nothing between these two. Oh! And Keller now losing some uh, valuable energy there, really, having to remount and get going again. Yeah, you see, tactically, it's also important which position you are. If, if somebody in front of you slow down just a little bit, you have to respond, you have to find the right line. And you, what you could see as well, uh, Keller, she hit a rock, a real spin, and then she had to get off the bike. The Langbad back in second place. Second place in this World Cup. The overall World Cup. 1-2, one, 1-2 two, one, two in this race. Neff leading at the moment, if you just joined us. It's the Panama stop at this year's Mercedes-Benz UCI Cross Country World Cup from the legendary venue of mont here in eastern Canada, just outside of Quebec. We've been racing here every year since 1991. It looks like Emily Betty's coming back to uh, that Look third at, place. Yes, she is. Betty really on the move. This race ain't over yet. We saw that already earlier when Kate Courtney was looking back over her shoulder when Annika Langfart was passing her, taking the lead again for that second place. Also, Bill Moyne not that far behind Betty. No, this is uh, just one hairpin. Could be in for a really frantic last couple of laps here. And if a rider has the feeling that he's going faster, and it's not only that the coach decides to course, uh, get gives that information, also the riders they can see each other as well. Another puncture. Jacqueline Morale there, so another flat tyre. A refill, but it didn't work. Looks like that. Is that because the tyre... Yeah, the ceiling into the tyre. Ah. Yeah, if the ceiling keeps on working, then you can continue. But most of the time, when you have a, a big cut, because of uh, it's too big for the ceiling. It's too big for the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. And also, the, when we talk about a sealant in the tires, it's like a, uh, a liquid that seals as it comes out the hole. Yeah, but it, most of the time, it's just big thorns. Yeah, it, but it doesn't work for uh, big cuts. But for that reason, now they, they're using the, the foam rolls, the noodles, yeah. into these tires, yeah. and that avoids the, the cut into the, the tire. Gotcha. But that's a new system, which still is uh, in the beginning of the development and but it's working pretty well it needs to have a few uh, improvements but they're working on that so Neff coming around now to finish lap number four gonna go out onto the penultimate lap very shortly indeed plain sailing so far for the Swiss star takes on some plenty more fluids Number one on her back, the world champ. A leader in the World Cup as well. Busy week for her, but not one that seems to have taken its toll. European champion in Glasgow, in Scotland on Tuesday. Second in short track here on Friday. Where Annika Langford won, here she is. 
Very strong in short track. Incredibly strong in short track. That would actually would have been uh, only about his fourth win out of five short tracks this year. It's only uh, Alexander Keller who won that one in uh, Fall North. So Neff still looking to have some power in the legs. Gets up, gives a little sprint up towards the line. Petit, two more laps to go. Just two to go now. So stay with us, everyone. We'll be back with the last two laps from here in Montsentan right after this. See you soon. Pump up your tires for the world of Red Bull. The best live events, feature films and shows. Make it your world and download the app for free. Red Bull TV is available on all your devices, anywhere, at any time. Go beyond the ordinary. Get the app now. From the creators of Not Bad, the saga of bicycle tomfoolery continues in Spain. With even more shenanigans and more unbelievable riding. Could you imagine just hanging out in Spain for like three weeks and trying to shoot a whole movie here? Not too bad. Now available on Red Bull TV. Welcome back then to Montanan in Canada, the penultimate stop. This is Mercedes Benz UCI Cross Country World Cup. Yolanda left Neff leads by 1 minute and 25 seconds over that woman there. Annika Langvad, as she goes through the start finish, two laps to go now. But it doesn't look like anyone is going to catch Yolanda Neff, does it, Bart? No, it, it doesn't look like that uh, Langvad lost uh, another 10 seconds to that finish line. So, yeah, Yolanda definitely, she's on her, her way to another win. Looks like that after the European Champions title from last Tuesday, second place last Friday. A busy week, what we said, but it's worth more than that. Betty, two minutes and five seconds. Yana Bellamoyna, not that far behind her. She's coming closer. Well, Kate Courtney losing around 25 seconds uh, between that last split and that start finish line. Excuse me, split one and the finish line. So, uh, yeah, Courtney is losing a lot. Definitely uh, perhaps feeling the effort in the closing stages of this race. It's going to be uh, a hard fight for that third place. I think Bit it is. Bellamoyna, Betty, Courtney. I just saw a sign there that said, beware of bears in the area. <laughs> I haven't seen any of you. Uh, uh, no, I haven't seen anyone here. I'm going to go out and look for them tonight. It's nice if you could see one. <laughs> it would be pretty good. <laughs> I didn't know they were in this. We don't have them in uh, Europe. At least not where we live. <laughs> no. I don't think Holland's famous for its bears. <laughs> Nor the UK. So. Nah. Really hard to say that she's not in the form of her life at the moment. She's got to be feeling good about those World Championships, but if she can keep this going. In two weeks' time, we have the finals of the World Cup in La Bresse, and two weeks afterwards. And the cross team didn't even actually have the easiest travel here, I believe. They I got, don't know. No, they were. They got. Uh, they got their flight got cancelled at New York. And instead of risking taking another flight and losing their bags, they claimed everything and drove here around 14 hours just to make things a bit more difficult. Respect for the team members, the yeah. staff. Yeah. It's a, big it's drive. a long drive. Yeah, yeah, I've done it. It's a really, it's a nice drive. It's a nice it's a drive. It's, that, yeah. That's true. But if you have a jet lag, and probably they have that too. Uh, it's really after. nice for a couple of hours. Yeah. 14 <laughs> hours is probably a bit strong for most. Four us for like uh, 10 hours. Bellamoyna dropping into this new section of track for this year. It was uh, in the course in the past. She's looking good to me she right does. now. Doesn't look stressed at all, this year on the bike? Annika Langford, second place. She's starting to ride. I think Annika's riding better now than she did at the start of the, at the start of the race, it looks to me, you know? It looks like that, yeah. Maybe she was a bit stressed. Yeah, just settled in now.
And, you know, Annika Langvad, we've seen a part get tired or run down perhaps towards the end of the season. She didn't go to those European Championships and she said that on social media, that's why, because, you know, she wants to be strong at the end of, of this year. So, uh, trying to cut down on the travel and the trips and all yeah, adds up. Jana Bilamoyna, the same story. I mean, uh, sometimes riders, they have to make uh, decisions. Betty's coming back to Courtney here. You can she see really it. Is, yeah. Just a few seconds left. Yeah, what Yolanda's doing, uh, of course, she's flying and she has yeah, the feeling of, of, of a winner, but she can and she might pay the price for that even afterwards, after this week. And they have to fly back. Oh, another problem for the Cliff team. Oh, it's Karina Nash this time. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> this is very, very right. friendly. <laughs> she's fun, isn't she? <laughs> Yeah, if you, see, if you see the rocks in this oh. decent town, it's, yeah, it's not that hard to imagine how uh, many punches you're going to have. No, I walked around like the this. track. I walked around the track actually earlier in the week, and yeah, it looked as rough as it's ever looked as well. But Especially in the race, the, yeah, yeah. the riders are less concentrated for yeah most of it because they are so exhausted. Then uh, a small mistake or, or a, a hit on the rockets that's quick happened. So, Patty. Well, Kate Cord, he'd be how, how able to hold on to that third place. It doesn't look like to me. No, a lot of pressure coming from behind now. Bellamoyna so as well. Bellamoyna there in the distance chasing Emily Batty here. Yeah, this is going to be a good last lap, this one. One and a half lap to go. It'll be uh, Emily Batty's fourth consecutive podium at her third at top three, if she can do it. Yeah, she has a great season. The so best, far. one of her best seasons, yeah. We are waiting for a win. And will she have her first win? The World Cup win for Emily Batty. You feel like it's uh, definitely coming. When will it be? That's the question, Bart. It's yeah, not getting any easiest, that's for sure. 30 oh. years old now, Emily Batty. She's still got a good while ahead of her. If you look at Gunrita, she could go on for another 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> but I mean, even uh, Gunrita, she's still winning World Cup, so first she has to beat her. And I must apologise to Gunrita, mate, another 15, not 20, she's only 45. Sorry, Gunrita, if you're listening. I'll be in trouble. Definitely, she's watching this race. I think so. So, <laughs> Neff on this difficult climb. Hasn't caused her too many problems today, though. No problems for her. Suspension locked out on these climbs. Taking the corners wide. Trying to make them as uh, the least steep she can. It's important. What's the yellow plate, plate signify, the Mark? Best team in the ranking, uh, so the, the number one team at the moment. Cross team. In the, world, in the World Cup team That is ranking. the fight for third place. Courtney, we know that she'll dig deep. That's the one thing we do know about the young rider from San Francisco. So Langford is in the second place, and this is the number three, four. And also Bill Amoyna is coming. In vision, fifth place, not that far behind Betty. None of these riders really leave anything out there, that's for sure. And if you see the rider in front of you, you know exactly how he feels as well. Uh, if they slow down, you can feel it. And also you can see the body language while they speak. Oh, some trouble on the track. A Brazilian rider, looks like that. I know. Jacqueline Morel. Brazilian. Well, this is uh, not the easiest World Cup track on the circuit. Causing problems for bikes and bodies. Down the Beatrice comes Yolanda Neff. No problem again. Drop a seat pose as well for her on a full suspension bike. She's about as comfy as she can be today. It helps all these little things, helps a lot to go fast in the descent. So Courtney still on third. Betty. Oh, here's Anke Langvard, second place. Two specialised teammates then, second and so third at the moment. 
from two till five, you can see here on this oh, climb. And Annika Langvad stalling in this turn again, just giving away another few getting valuable it. seconds. Getting exhausted. Courtney fighting hard for that third place. And Bay slowly, slowly reeling her in. Mm. It's not easy for her too. She's coming closer. And probably she will get her as well. But it goes slow. Yeah, both these they're really battling. Taking that inside line. More smooth, more fast. Three times a runner-up at World Cups, Emily Batty. What does Jana Bellamoyna has left? The defending World Cup winner from last year, Jana Bellamoyna. Fifth at the moment, fifth place. With the two riders in front of you, there's still something left. Betty now in front of Kate Courtney, before that La Beatrice descent. Hopefully neither of them will risk too much down this. So Betty on three. Well, nicely ridden down there this time, a lot smoother than it was a few laps ago when we saw uh, Emily down there with both wheels locked up. Managed to ride it out though. Yeah, you're right, a totally different style this time. Yeah, she looks like she's settled in, but I mean, and now she sprints, so some Definitely some energy left in the tank. Third place for her. No drop of seat post on that bike. That definitely won't make things any easier on the steep bits. Yeah, especially with uh, that short track on Friday, riders they have to use the same bike for the whole weekend. That's a rule. So, sometimes, yeah, riders they choose to take a, a hardtail bike. Although, well, probably they will ride a uh, full suspension bike. Especially on a course like this here in Monsenman. A cross country cross. Langford is second. Can Emily Batty get to Annika Langford? It looked like this here on this climb, but <laughs> in real, still a huge gap. They don't go that fast on this climb. Annika Langford, fully qualified. Here's Betty. Completed those studies last year. Here's Emily Batty, yeah. It looks like that second place is still possible. It does. It's a 25 second gap roughly between uh, Langard and Batty, the Canadian, fully motivated here, the crowd really behind her, and that might even play a bigger part now in the closing stages of this race. Boy, a great ride right for Batty. Yeah. That's really steep, especially here, these big rocks, they are everywhere on this climb. It makes it even more difficult. Small chain ring on the front of that bike of uh, Kate Courtney's, the rear cassette now, the rear block as you call it, of such a range of gears, it's incredible. One, one, one chain ring at the front, 12, 12 at the back. Yeah, 12 at the back. Massive range of gears. I mean, of course, you can do a World Cup track on just a single front chain ring. But still, I mean, uh, our ladies, they're running a, a 30 teeth uh, front chain ring. It's uh, still pretty small, in my opinion. Look, still pretty small. It's four teeth, but bigger, it it's four teeth bigger than what I run on my bike, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it means how steep these climbs are. Yeah, it really does, huh? It is. But I think, like uh, Nino, he will run like uh, 38. I think Anton Cooper is running a 42 front chain. 42, yeah. Front. Imagine how strong these guys are. Yana Billamoyna, fifth at the moment. 17 seconds now between Batty and Lang. Tauber, Anna Tauber. Is she on six together with Keller? Is she still on six? She was when they crossed the line. The lot went through the last split. Hardtail bike for her. What's the weight of a frame bar, a hardtail frame? These bikes are around uh, 8.9 kilos. Eight, eight point, yeah, 8.5 to 9 kilos, yeah. I'd probably need that in pounds to make any sense of it. Um, double it, and then a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going for it at home, work it out for yourselves. <laughs> it's very light. PSI bar, and then we have pounds and kilograms. It's, it's a tricky why world. Is, why it's is a tricky UK. world we live in, bar. 
And we, you have, even we have miles and kilometers too. And you even drive on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> 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 You're right. <laughs> anyway, we do have where I'm sat. Why are we commentating together? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. This works well, it's okay. So. Annika okay. Lampard. Coming under a bit of pressure, we think, from Emily Batty behind her. If she goes to the finish line, one more lap to go. That's it, we're on the last lap now. All the fight for on this last lap. That's a nice style, Annika. Just descent. So Neff already crossed that finish line. Here she is. Last lap for her. Coming into the easiest part of the course. Already over that start finish. Now on to this final lap then for Yolanda Neff. A faultless performance so far. Linking those corners together so effortlessly. Last trip really across the water for these riders. They will all go back to Europe now, and that's where they'll be based for the next few weeks. It is, the yeah. World yep. Championships coming up. Yeah, two big events are coming up. Really important for the last part of the season. I mean, even after this race, uh, Yolanda has a fair gap in the overall standings, but everything is still possible with La Bresse. Uh, that short track on Friday and cross country on Sunday, with, uh, where riders can earn. 375 points for the weekend. So Langrad now coming up to start her last lap. Oh, problem. Ah, no way. What's happened there? It must be a flat, is it? Okay, Courtney, it looks like that. I think a rear flat. Yeah, you can see the uh, the bottom of the screen there. You can see, oh, what a shame for That's Kate a Courtney. Shame. That is a real shame. Back wheel as well. Well, it can happen to anyone now. It's happened to Kate Courtney. You've got to feel for her. It was going to be her best ever World Cup finish today. On that third place. She's ridden so bravely all, all race long and so well. This, is, this costs always too much time. Nothing she can do. She finished third in that short track last Friday, which was a really good result. She had a great race so far. Oh. Second for a while, third. Well, that is a shame. And a tower. She's going to be right behind Kate actually now. So. Tauber and Bella Moyna are in the uh, podium spots. Yeah, but uh, Tauber still sixth. Uh, I mean, That's right. Yeah. Kate Courtney is still on five. But Tauber not that far behind her. That's right, under real pressure then. Kate Courtney. And she was suffering a little bit before that flat tire already. So. What's left for that last lap of her? Well, if Kate Courtney can stay where she is and take that fifth place, it will be a first elite World Cup podium. So that is definitely worth fighting for. The under 23 winner here a year ago. An impressive first year in elite bar. Yeah, very strong. Even a race like uh, Cape at the beginning, beginning of the season, uh, where the riders have to do stages of uh, four or five hours in the saddle a day, it's hard for a young rider, but uh, she managed it pretty well. Probably she learned a lot from Annika Langford in that race. One of the most impressive things I think about Kate is the fact that she does it almost purely on a diet of just tacos. Is that what you eat? That's what I, Every day. When I visited her, that's what we ate. At least on Instagram, there's a lot of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's for real. We, we ate tacos. Big time. They were good. That's good. Tasty. They were pretty good. <laughs> I think it's an after-ride treat. I don't think it's three times yeah, a day. That might be... Uh, <laughs> that might be two. Yeah. Right well, as they treat themselves yeah. most of the time. After right. a good training. Damn right as well. Why wouldn't you? Well, why not? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, they deserve it. Look at the pace of Batty up here. Three. Really fast, Bart. She knows Jana Bellamoyna is just behind her. She looks strong, and Maybe you know. she can make that second spot. Langford is not that far be in front of her. Go, and with the yeah. amount of uh, mechanical problems we've seen here this afternoon, I hate to say it, you get the feeling anything could happen. Yeah. Before they cross the finish line, you don't know what's going on. 
Yeah, the flat tires today, it's, it's, it's a lot already. Yeah, really. You'll surprising. see more even in the men's category later on today. That gap between these two is not that big. No, it's it's a bit, but it's not. Well, we'll tell you now on the clock. And now, seconds, long like gone. One minute 38. That's going to be some margin. And then it is uh, 17 seconds between Langbad and Batty. Has she got 17 seconds in her on this last lap, last bit of this lap now? Yeah, but uh, the, the main climb still has to come. And the more technical descents has to come also. So Kate Courtney, is she still in that fifth spot? With Bill Moyna in front of her. The tower just behind her on six. She's pushing pretty well. Yeah. It's really hard after that flat tire, which always What's disturbs your rhythm. What does it do to your motivation? Does it motivate you more to carry on? It must it's, be pretty heartbreaking. I mean, she's, I still on the, she's still on the podium, yeah. fifth place, so that's probably the, mo the best motivation that she can have. And she knows the tower, she's closely behind her. She has to push it really hard. Back in your day, right? I believe you used to pack a inner tube and fix it on the Everything. side of the track yourself. Fix it by yourself. <laughs> Luckily, we had uh, two and a half hour races, so there was a bit of time to do it. <laughs> no rush. <laughs> no rush, no. But still, yeah, we, these days we were riding with inner tubes. Imagine That's right. like... I remember people used to ride with them as blown up as they could to save time pumping them up. <laughs> Basically, like inner tubes blown up, hanging all. You could win races still with a flat tyre these days. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. it's hard to imagine it. These days you could, but I guess it depends on where on the track you get the puncture and how far you have to go at that yeah. top speed zone. Uh, it's a big how factor. good the mechanics are as well. I mean, that's, that's the main part of the team as well. The people around the rider. 13 seconds between Courtney and Tauba then. There's Anna Tauba. Oh, oh. A lot of flats. Oh, no, that's a problem with the seat post. Is it? Or with the dropper seat post. No, I think they're working on the back wheel. Oh, as well. No, you're right. Yeah. They're yeah. working on the back wheel. You're right. Sorry for that. She's not had much luck today, Katerina. Second flat. That's like the thing I had all day. <laughs> oh, Betty. Really charging now. The crowd doing everything it can. They'd get over the fence and push her if they were allowed to. Another strong performance from Emily Batty. She has a great season. Former Pan American champion Emily Batty. Yeah, she's really had an amazing season, that's for sure. Still searching for that elusive first ever World Cup win. On the podium here, the last four years, Emily Batty. So Langford comparing lap times. Betty against Langford. Took 20 seconds uh, out of Emily Batty. Did Annika Langvad on lap four. 16 back though to Batty on lap five. So to and fro in really all the way through this race. Lap one was where the damage was done. Langvad nearly, well, 44 seconds faster. So Batty's first lap, I don't know if she had a problem or something, but she dropped serious time and she's been fighting back ever since. Yeah, and if it's uh, 16 uh, s seconds that the previous uh, penultimate last lap, still possible with the last lap with uh, Langford in vision. Sat right on the tip and of that seat belt. That means she's she's pushing it really hard. Yeah. The speed she has here, this is actually a climb out of the saddle. I think that second spot is still possible for her. Incredible. And even she will take uh, some risks in that descent too. A lot of fans on the side. The Canadian national champion, Emily Batty. So a second spot for Langvad. Not Langvad. that far anymore. Langvad, the national champion for Denmark. Here comes Batty. Well, Langvad hasn't got much room to play with now. She feels the pressure. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And there goes by another few seconds. That costs a lot of time, the yep. way she drops off her bike. She's exhausted. Also, the way she's how, how she's walking. She does look. She does look like she's hurting, Bart. And of course, if Batty gets it by us, another 40 points go south in the overall World Cup. Another 40 points to Yolanda Neff. Langvad really, believe me, she'll be doing everything she can to stay there. But she does need to stay there if she can. And now.
about he almost in touching distance. It is, yes, yes. We've got La Beatrice and then another big climb. Yeah, and especially I think the descent uh, suits uh, Emily Bat pretty well. Even with that hard hill. She's not, it doesn't bother her at all. Where Langval is riding a full suspension bike, even no drop of seat post for her. Just a light hard tail bike on this course. Respect for that. Negative stem on the front of that bike to try and get the front, the bars as low as she can. Is she able to make it to that second place? People running besides the course. Interesting battle. Langford, here she is. About to drop in. Last time in La Beatrice. So the most infamous piece of track on any World Cup cross-country track. Safely around the turn, that's, I would say, the hard bit of it done. Good. And nice and fast Betty. down there. Not that far behind here. Fighting for that second spot. Treating La Beatrice with respect. Can't blame her for that. And already at the top of the next climb is our leader, Yolanda Neff. Everything in control for her so far. And it's not that far anymore. Cross team rider. The biggest climbs are done. Did she hit that top of the climb. Some technical parts following. But then the finish line is almost there. Not that far anymore for her. The numbers two and three in the race. And there it is. You can see it for yourselves. Nothing much between them now. Oh, Langvad. Another hard climb in front of these. Hey, so close. Going to get steeper now and a little bit more technical on this climb. Especially the hairpins are very steep, are very technical. 2016 world champion, four times a marathon world champion as well. This woman, incredibly talented over any distance. What's the body language of uh, Langbad say to you, Bart? Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's hard to say. She's fighting at least for it, yeah. uh, for that second spot. And still, Betty has to close that gap too. I mean, only the descent that will make the decision. Here, Langford looks still good to me. Yep. She has the endurance as well. She has the power. She knows it's not that far anymore. But another mistake of her. But also, Betty is struggling with this hard climb. But that technical part, which is following uh, after the, if they're crossing uh, the downhill uh, course, after that. Probably that will make the decision, that part of the race. And Betty, she knows she can make it to the second place. She will work really hard for that. Langvad, she needs the points for the overall standing. Langvad goes through. Here comes Emily Batty. So just 12 seconds now. Whoa, small mistake of her rear as she hit a rock. Excuse me, just eight seconds. There's Belamoyna. Fourth place. Kate Courtney still on five. And that gap between uh, Langvad and Batty came down by seven seconds between split one and two. Here comes Yolanda Neff, then look at the crowd here today. She's almost there, almost at the finish line. It's been an incredible performance by Yolanda Neff today. Crossing the tech feed zone one more time, and then just a few hundred meters to that finish line. She will be happy to see the line. A hard day for her, for everybody. And still sprinting. Still energy left in those legs. And behind her, the battle for second place in this race rages on. And so do the, uh, this is the battle for points for the overall World Cup. The number two in the race. Yep, Langvad goes through. There's Betty. All right, and that gap's got a little bit bigger. There's, there's Betty. Different line in. Third place for Emily Betty at the moment. So here comes Yolanda Neftem. Just going to come around this final turn. It's been an absolutely 
faultless performance. It's going to be Yolanda Neff's third win here in Montsantan, her 11th career World Cup win. And she takes a giant step towards taking the overall World Cup title again with that one today. Amazing ride for Neff. Taking the win by over a minute. What a phenomenal performance that was. Yeah, the way she was riding this race today was uh, absolutely phenomenal. Her second big win in seven days. A World Cup today, European Championship on Tuesday. She loves this course, that's for sure. It suits her down to the ground, no one even else in sight, the world champion. Looking good now, I would have to say, for this year's World Cup. That's second place, Annika Langvat, so far. And I think she's held off the attack of Emily Batty. You can hear the crowd raging behind. Back looking back over her shoulder. It's not necessary anymore. She will make it. She's going to do it, yeah. Yep. Langbad actually opening that gap back up. Wow, it was a great race behind Neolanda, wasn't it? It is, but the overall standing, it's still uh, it's still open. Yeah, very I mean, much so. The title is not there for Yolanda Ness. No, it is going to come down to that race. But what a race for Emily Batty after that bad start, that first lap. We don't know what happened exactly with her, but no. she lost a lot of time that first lap. She certainly did, but, yeah. That first lap really costed Emily Batty. But a great performance of Annika Langvad too. Langvad, yes. Respect for that. Absolute respect for that. It's not been an easy day in the saddle for her, I would say. She took the win in short track here on Friday. Second place today in the XCO. The reverse of her main competitor. She's got a smile on her face. Annika Langvad takes second place then. Here comes Emily Bay, it's going to be the biggest cheer of the day for her. The Canadian crosses the line for a fine third. Her fourth consecutive podium this year. What a season she has too. Really good season. Your prediction was right, Bart? Prediction was right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, impressive uh, the way Yana uh, Bellamorna looks like she had a small crash. A black shoulder, right? Right shoulder. It wouldn't be too difficult to fall off round here, you have to say. But a good finish of her. Fourth place podium. She might be happy with that. Not a good result of her. You see? Black shoulder. Yeah, she's been down. Strong ride though, but really, you'd have to say, Bella Moyna still coming back from injury, right? It was such yeah. a, a, you have to a mention big that injury sure. on that, yeah. oh, the magnitude of it. Yeah, broken hip, so good ride for Yana Bella Moyna. She won here last year, couldn't match that today, but still a strong ride. Taubo and, and Courtney. Look at this. And it was five and six, a sprint. Oh, you've got to feel for Kate Courtney, that puncher. It doesn't look like she's going to get her first World Cup podium then today. This is the battle for it. Can Kate Courtney get back past Anna Tower? She's right on her wheel. It's going to be a sprint for that last spot on the podium. Well, we Number know five and six in the race. We know how good Kate Courtney can be at short track racing. Oh, you can see the pain though. There's nothing left in either of these riders' legs. Can they find anything for that sprint to the line? They are both suffering. It'll be and hurts. Can Courtney get on her first World Cup podium? Oh, grits her teeth. I don't think she can. She's got nothing left. Tauber takes fifth here today, then. Kate Courtney takes sixth place. Oh, what a shame for. You've got to Kate feel for her, really. Yep. But what a performance of Tauber. Oh, my God. That one has took it out of him. Anna Tauber collapsing off the bike. That is, though, Kate Courtney's best ever Elite World Cup finish. She almost got it. She just lost it because of that flat tire in the penultimate lap. Yeah. Well, Kate Courtney is a rider that leaves nothing on the track at all. That's how much racing at this level hurts. Mountain bike racing is not a glamorous sport. No, and 
The results are at the finish line and not before. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> yeah. It became really exciting again in that last lap. Didn't it? Alessandra Kalla comes up. Of course, the winner, Yolanda Neff. That was already uh, no. But uh, Annika Langfahrt here. Hayley Smith, what a race for her. Eighth place. Great performance of her. Another Canadian rider. It's always hometown racers has a lot of advantage and perform even better. That's Hayley Smith's best ever World Cup finish as well. Maya Zosowska. You haven't seen that much of no. her in today's race. We saw her with probably a, like a, a shifting problem or something like that with the drivetrain or maybe a flat tire. We don't know exactly. Ninth place. Ninth place for she did, of course, become the world champion here in 2010, Maja Zosowska. And a win of her teammate, Yolanda Neff. So we've got her across the line in ninth place. Big gaps in between the riders. Five minutes, that's uh, seventh uh, place of, uh, you know, of uh, Keller. It means it's a hard race that has been for the riders. A really hard race. The conditions were very hard. Not only the course, but also the conditions. And I guess the men's race will be the same. Yeah, that's for sure. Here comes Linda in the gun then. You can see about that this race has take, taken its time. And it's been a tough couple of... Uh, we said about how hard this week has been, you know, with, with a lot of riders coming over from Europe late, but let's not forget just how hard the last round was in Valnor as well. That's well, yeah, 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 it is. And it's the end of the season, it's what you said. Uh, yeah. It counts all together. Even for Yolanda, she has to take a little bit of rest, I would say, uh, because there are still a few more important races coming up. Yeah. So, uh, and not much time between them now, is it? I mean, no. like you say, it's a month away now to the World Championship, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, like Unrita, she didn't do this race. Uh, Pauline Frappelvo, she did do this race too. But, uh, yeah, they have a lot of advantage, not traveling that much, not doing the hard races like this. And they can save a lot of energy. And that's what you need for the rest of the season. So the winner of today, yeah. Yolanda Neff, taking that inside line of La Beatrice, it's probably the most difficult line. Most of the riders took it outside, flying here with that full suspension bike, drop a seat post in the descent. She was dominating the race from the beginning. Impressive how she did it. She opening at each split time a few seconds again to Annika Langfahrt, second place of her. But Yolanda was dominating the race. The way she did it, European champion last Tuesday and winning today's race. Well, she is with Rick. Down to you, Rick. Yolanda, an absolutely superb win today. How happy are you with how your week's gone? Oh, I, I can't even tell. I'm, it, it still feels like a dream. Like I've, I've been dreaming of this win for such a long, long time. Like uh, This is my 11th win and uh, I was so close in Nova Mesto and then in Val di Sole and in Andorra. And I've been, yeah, I've been working for this and I've been dreaming of this for, like I still, I'm still not sure if it's real. But if you're out there by yourself, having built such a big gap, how difficult is it to manage your riding? Today was so hard. Like in the third lap, I was, I felt like I was, I was done, and it was so hot out there. I just really had to slow down all the time. I had to tell myself to, to really slow down. The, the heat is really was, was, uh, was extreme today. And the last three laps were really just about uh, like uh, calculating how fast I could go and just to keep keep some gap. And I'm I'm so happy that it all worked out. How important was it today to beat Annika as well in terms of the overall? I, I, I don't really think about what the others do. I just want to do well for myself. And but it's like it's unbelievable to win here because the last two times that I've won here, I've won the overall as well. So I don't know where it will go this year, but it's just a very very good sign. Yolanda, congratulations! Well done today. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> well, Bart. Definitely referencing how hot it is out there. We're in for uh, the men's race. Is yeah, going to be it's even uh, hotter in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, definitely it is. But the way a rider is thinking during a race is uh, is, is something nice to hear, actually. 
So, Yolanda Neff winning this race. And Anna Tauba, fifth place. Kate Kuhn, she just missed that podium, sixth. Good day for you, Bart. Fourth and fifth. Yeah, I'm really happy with these uh, two ladies on the podium. Oh, Kate Courtney missing out by a podium by one. It's a shame, second. yeah. But that's flat tire. So third place, it was a really hard fight for Emily Batty. She almost got it, that second spot, but she finished third after a bad start in the beginning of the race. But the way the fans on the side pushed her to that second, to that third spot, impressive. Second spot for Annika Langvat. Still, the, the, for the fight for the title is still wide open. She fought the fight really hard during the race. But all was the respect for Yolanda Neff. She won it. And the way she did it was very impressive. Crossing that line. Congratulations for that. Yep. Absolute tour de force from Yolanda Neff today. What a ride Emily Batty had then. Comes from near Ottawa in Canada. Annika Langbad, second place for her today. Gonna to take that World Cup overall fight to the last round in La Bresse now. But Yolanda Neff has done it. That was a tough one, Bart. Yeah, the way she did it was impressive. From the beginning, after that first climb, she dropped the riders in the descent, opening the gaps every split time a bit faster. But also a lot of respect for Langvat. Second place, the way how she defended. Yeah, the overall standings. So 142 points going to that final. There are 375 on offer there. And so, we know uh, Langford is strong in that short track yeah. discipline. Exactly. Mar Wojtowska stays in third. Emily Batty goes from fifth to fourth. Sorry, sorry, stays in fourth as well after a short track. Stay with us. Me and Bart will be right back then with the post show. See you in a second. Pump up your tires for the world of Red Bull. The best live events, feature films and shows. Make it your world and download the app for free. Red Bull TV is available on all your devices, anywhere, at any time. Go beyond the ordinary. Get the app now. From its early beginnings to the creation of major events and disciplines. The ABC of mountain biking. Now available on Red Bull TV. Sometimes life doesn't go the way you wanted. The years of my life that I wasted in prison. I take a lot of positives out of that situation. I decided to do Ironman UK as my chance to turn professional. I never had money to afford packing lessons. I've been on the Ugandan team three times now. Great achievements are with those who keep on going. Oh, no, no! If you don't throw yourself into something that you're passionate about, you may be wasting your time here. Whole different stories, united by one driving force. The biggest thing is belief. The Way of the Wild Card. All episodes available on Red Bull TV. This August, join our live events around the world. We pump up the volume at the Lollapalooza Festival in Chicago and drop the mic in South America at the Red Bull Batalla de los Gallos. We cheer at the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup in Canada and France. We hold our breath in Switzerland and Denmark. Red Bull cliff diving. We spin the wheels at the Crankworx Slope Style, Whistler, Canada. We go full throttle at the World Rally Championship in Germany. And the MotoGP Rookies Cup, Austria.
this August, live on Red Bull TV. Welcome back to the Mercedes-Benz Race Review, live from here in Monta Tancanda, where we've just seen Yolanda Neff with an absolutely faultless ride. Yeah, she was dominating the race from the beginning. Uh, of course, uh, after that start loop, uh, she had to settle in a little bit, but after the first climb, uh, L'Enfer de Montsin and uh, La Beatrice, she was taking the lead and she didn't give it away uh, <laughs> to anybody else. I'll tell you one thing about Yolanda Neff, when she wins, that's her second win this year, she does it in style, both those wins by well over a minute. Yeah, it's crazy. If she has the space to ride and she gains the time and all the descents in the technical descents, the same we saw in uh, St. Wendel earlier this uh, in um, Alpstad, sorry, uh, earlier this year. St. Uh, Wendel, that was a Devon Deck. Uh, <laughs> sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if she has the space, she's so strong in the descents. She's beating everybody over there and uh, nobody else can uh, follow her. She beat everyone today, including Annika Langbad, who finished in second place. She's with Rick. Annika second today, but just how tough was that last couple of laps? <laughs> it was crazy tough, but actually I suffered the most on second, third lap. Uh, I felt like I went a little bit over my limit at the beginning and on a course like this, this if you go over your limit, it's, it's just so brutal and I struggled so badly on the climbs today. Um, I really struggled finding the rhythm. Uh, kept on make, making mistakes. Uh, it was quite slippery in the forest, but I think everybody kind of <laughs> had to deal with slippery conditions. Uh, I'm really, really happy with taking second. Uh, based on how I felt out there, I really couldn't ask for more. The gap's now 142 points back to Yolanda. What does that do for your tactics in Le Well, I think it really doesn't change much. Now I can just go and race <laughs> for the victory, like always. I mean, uh, I'm definitely just going to go into it like uh, with a clear mind and just really reset and, and, and do my best for sure. We look forward to seeing you there, Annika. Well done today. Thank you very much. Interesting, you know, a, to see how happy she is with that second place. A brilliant ride, of course. But, I mean, you said that she just didn't look quite herself on the climb today. Lots of little mistakes, as she just said. Yeah, she said it was more difficult uh, as it looks like on TV. Uh, she was struggling uh, with uh, her traction on the rear wheel, but also said she said uh, the descents were slippery too. So conditions were much harder, as we probably could see. Yeah. But uh, her form, her shape, she, that's good. And probably that's the most important thing. Second place. Of course, uh, Yolanda, there's only one winner. She won the short track. She lost 25 points in total this yeah, weekend. Yeah, Not that much. No. Everything is still wide open for that overall title. Good reason to be smiling. And of course, she came under real pressure, especially in the later stage of the race by Emily Batty. Let's have a look at their lap times sized up against each other. Yeah, Betty, she was uh, struggling in the beginning of the race. She lost 44 seconds, actually. Uh, we don't know why, but after that, she came back uh, 15 seconds most of the time. Uh, lap four, Langford was uh, 20 seconds faster again. But uh, Betty came really close to Langford. Yes, she did. Well, let's see if we can shed a little bit more light on what happened on that first lap with Emily Batty. She's down with Rick. Emily, a tough day out there, but it looked like you lost a lot of time to Annika on that first lap. What happened? Yeah, I mean, right off the start lap, um, I was on the inside and um, another rider just fully pinched me off, even though they knew I was there. And I just lost so much time in that first first start lap. So um, I was just like balls to the walls trying to make up for, for time. And um, I felt good. Like I felt like I just felt nothing. And the energy of this crowd, like I, I literally have goosebumps. The people on the fan, like the fans on the climb were just out of this world as far as cheering it was a net, like it was just so spectacular so I'm, I'm proud of today it wasn't the win but I'm, I'm I'll take third it's still Canada on the box well it's your fourth consecutive World Cup podium you must be full of confidence as we head to La Bresse. yeah I mean if I had a perfect start I think um, it would have been different again so um, definitely the confidence is there and the fitness is there and, and everything is just clicking and, and I'm really proud of uh, where I've come the early season to now so looking forward to the next two races Emily well done today thank you very much thank you I mean, you know, no doubt about it, Emily Batty is on the rise. And, and like she said, she might have had something for Yolanda Neff today if that first lap had gone better. Yeah, but she was really happy the way how she uh, rode her race, uh, ghost bumps, because of the crowd of the side of the race. I think she's so happy to do a race like that. And she doesn't bother that she, do, that, that she didn't win. So, uh, but she's in good shape as well. And she looks forward already to the next races. And um, 
it's just a matter of time to win the first World Cup. I am looking forward to the next few races as well because <laughs> the women, the, you know, the, it looks like a lot of the right women are on form at the moment as we head to the finals and the World Championships. Before that, though, we've got the small matter of the men's race here from this, the most famous of all the World Cup venues this afternoon. Nino Scherter does have a very real chance of taking the overall World Cup win this afternoon. He simply needs to finish first or second. He hasn't done, uh, he hasn't finished outside the top two this year, but what do you reckon? It's going to be a good race? Yeah, we know he had a cold, so uh, nothing is for sure right now. And uh, he leave it for what it was in the short track. But uh, he's Nino Shorter. <laughs> he's is. always on the podium, <laughs> top three. He's Nino so, Shorter, you don't need to say anymore. <laughs> it's going to be so, good. So uh, I'm looking forward. I am Not that long anymore. To. Not long at all. In fact, we better get off there and uh, get ourselves a nice cold drink somewhere. But thanks for joining me. Thank you for joining us at home. We'll be back in around 20 minutes for the men's race. Don't miss it. We'll see you then. See you there.